Local news, national news, even feel-good news. Delivering the topics that are relevant to you. That's why I listen to Joe. He covers it all. The Joe Kelly Show on WDBO. Well, we do have a lot of rain that we are dealing with here this afternoon for the drive home. As you just heard Paul Cross say just a moment ago, uh, as we do have uh, quite a bit of rain. Now, the big, heavy storms... Uh, for the most part, have uh, have pushed through out towards the beaches, though we are watching a, a, a band of showers, a line of showers out towards the villages that is making its way towards us here in the Orlando area. We'll keep a close eye on that. The villages, of course, northwest of the Orlando area, and it is making its way across Leesburg uh, and eventually here towards uh, the greater Orlando area. We'll keep an eye on that. Of course, Paul Cross will have our regular traffic updates for you, and we'll check uh, with Channel 9 Eyewitness News to get that updated forecast coming up in a moment. If you want to be able to see the behind the scenes here, uh, we've got a little bit of a change up here as Laurel is off today. Nicole is on the anchor desk, but Danny is on the video stream. Uh, you might be startled when you see Danny on the video stream because Danny sounds like that that would be a dude. But in this particular case, Danny is not a dude. Danny is a woman. Uh, so if you want to, yeah. Uh, so if you uh, if you want to check that out uh, in the live video stream right now, that's on the WDBO Facebook page. My name is Joe Kelly. Coming up a week from tomorrow. Uh, so that would be next Friday, right? Not this. Fr- <laughs> Are we doing this again, Paul Cross? But yeah, I don't know. Forget it. We're not doing this again. Yeah, I know. We, yeah, we'll uh, we'll check in with you a little bit later. Um, all right. So we got a, we have a few technical things that we're working through here uh, in the in the minutes leading up to the show. We had a couple things that broke, uh, but we have uh, I think we've fixed them and we're on our way to getting things working out real well. So don't worry about them. Um, all right. So we got a flash today from uh angry joe biden hang on i don't think i finished my thought though about what's coming up week from friday so a week from friday uh it is the uh, fifth annual make a wish a thon from for make a wish and we're really excited about this i am particularly excited not gonna lie there is a there's a thing called um parkinson's law and parkinson's law dictates uh that work expands to the time allowed for it uh, and this is this is this deals with uh, industrial engineering and uh, setting deadlines. Uh, work expands to the time allowed for it. So if you set yourself a deadline for say this afternoon or this evening by seven p.m., you've got two hours. You'll work your tail off for the next two hours and you'll make your deadline. But if you set if you have the same amount of work and you set your deadline for two weeks from now, it will take you two weeks to get it done. Because you'll procrastinate, you'll get busy doing other things. That's Parkinson's law. So our Make-A-Wish-A-Thon is coming up Friday, a week from tomorrow. And uh, consequently, I am still working on the Wish stories. I've been editing Wish stories all day long today. And I'm, I am, somebody asked me, they said, Joe, how can you sit there and listen to these stories all day? And are, is it not making you sad listening to these stories of these Wish children, children with critical illnesses who have been granted wishes from Make-A-Wish. And I was asked, aren't you getting sad listening to these stories? And I said, I'm not. And yes, these kids are, and their moms and dads are telling me these just terrible stories about illness and recovery and um, treatments. And they're just these tough lives, these tough kids are are living through. Um, But I know each of these kids had their wishes granted. And that makes me happy. And and I and it, it's life changing for these children and for their families, and that makes me happy. So I, I I don't I'm not sad, and and I hope you don't think that the wishathon a week from Friday. I hope you don't think it's going to be a sad day on WDBO. It's not going to be a sad day on WDBO. I can promise you that. Uh, it is going to be uplifting. Uh, it is it is going to be heartwarming. As as we share these stories with you, and we're going to have the whole day to be able to do so. Uh, we've made a few changes in our in our campaign this year. Uh, the, the biggest of which is we changed the date. Uh, we used to do it uh, in in the first couple of weeks of November, uh, but that always uh, caused us a, a few uh, calendar collisions with some other things. So we decided to move it to the end of August. Uh, after school gets started and everybody gets back in school, people get back into their routine. So we moved it to the end of August. Uh, the other thing we changed was uh, it was a three-day event in in all of our years past. Uh, starting this year, it's going to be a one-day event. But instead of 
uh, you know, broadcasting, you know, during little, little breaks here and there during the syndicated programming. Uh, we're going to drop everything. We're going to drop all that we're doing. We'll do we'll do news, weather, and traffic. Uh, but we're gonna we're gonna uh, drop our talk radio programming for the day, and we're just gonna be able to share stories with you. Now we have done the math on this, Paul Cross. Uh, we, we've done the math on this, and our goal is to raise sixty thousand dollars in ten hours. So sixty thousand dollars in ten hours. We uh, we broke that down to it has to be a hundred dollars a minute that we have to raise. Hundred dollars a minute. Six thousand an hour. You're right. Yeah. So six thousand an hour. Hundred dollars a minute, and uh, with a hundred dollars a minute, we will hit our goal of sixty thousand dollars. Now, that's a that's that's a lot of. I mean, if you go to the casino, you don't you don't rack up money that fast. I mean, a hundred dollars a minute. Uh, but I I have absolute faith in you, our listeners, you those who who uh, who live in our community, who send your kids to school in our community, who have jobs in our community. Uh, who make a home in our community, and who want to help out kids in our community. And that's where this money goes. It doesn't, it doesn't go off to some big organization somewhere where you don't really, you can't follow the money. Uh, people ask me all the time, you know, Joe, you've had cancer. Why don't you do a big fundraiser for, for the cancer charities? Uh, and and my, my challenge with the cancer charities is, and, and they do great work. Don't misunderstand me. They do great work. But... Uh, I was never able to really see where my money went. I, I, I really, I work hard for my money. You work hard for your money. Don't sing the song, but I, I work hard for my money and, and my time. My time is valuable. And if I'm going to donate my time and my money, I want to know where it goes. I want to be able to see the results of my time and of my money. And I could never do that with the cancer organizations. I, it just, it just went into the ether, just went in, and I, and I never really knew where it was being spent because they spent on so many different things. Make-A-Wish is incredibly simplistic. Make-A-Wish has one singular purpose. They only do one thing, and that is grant wishes to children with critical illnesses so that they may have hope and happiness moving forward. So that they may have hope for tomorrow and happiness moving forward and to be able to create, create memories. Most of our children survive, okay? There, there's a misconception about Make-A-Wish that this is the final wish for children. And I cannot tell you how many parents, Make-A-Wish parents that I've talked to, that when they first heard about Make-A-Wish and that their, children was, their, their child was going to be eligible for a wish, uh, I, I, almost 100% of parents say no, not my uh-uh, mm-mm, no. Parents say no because they think that we only grant a child's final wish. Um, and, and, you know, maybe in the, in the beginning days of Make-A-Wish, uh, as it got started in the, in the early 1980s, maybe that was the mission. Uh, but it, is, it has expanded since, and that is to any child under the age of 18 – with a critical illness, and and you know we've we've got a big binder that defines what a critical illness is, and and we make sure all the children that come through Make a Wish qualify uh, for a wish, and so the stories you're going to hear a week from Friday are going to be happy and uplifting, and a lot of those kids uh, are gonna are gonna you know move on with their lives. They're going to become adults. They're going to be become productive. Many of whom they'll become parents and. And, and they'll, they'll go on, but they'll always have that memory, that lasting memory. Because my memory from my teenage years when I had cancer, when I was in the hospital, that's it. That's all I remember is um, I, I remember coming out of surgery when I had my spleen removed. I remember, um, you know, them making me sit up the very first day I came out of surgery. I'm like, why would you make a child sit up with staples in his belly? Uh, why would you do this to me? Uh, I remember that vividly. I remember remember vividly every chemotherapy appointment I ever had. I remember vividly every radiation therapy appointment I ever had. I remember vividly every test I ever had. I couldn't even describe to you some of the tests. And there was one where they stuck needles in my feet. Uh, and, and by needles, I mean like syringes. Uh, and, and they would give me shots between my toes. That's something that heroin addicts do. But I, but, but I had to do it as part of a medical process. Um, and, and I was never granted a wish. 
Now, I wasn't granted a wish because I was sick at pretty much the same time that Make-A-Wish was was being born. Uh, And that is about 1982, 1983. So literally, uh, it didn't exist yet uh, when I got sick. And I don't begrudge that I didn't get a wish, but I can relate to what these kids are going through. I can understand that their lives and their parents' lives are 100% consumed with the illness that their children are suffering from. And that other kids, that other siblings of the sick child get ignored, not because they choose to ignore them, but because they have no choice but to ignore them. Uh, because a sick child needs 100% of the oxygen and, and atmosphere and time and attention. And, and honestly, my, I've got a brother that I rarely talk about. Uh, I've got a brother that's 18 months older than me, a year and a half older than me, my brother Steve, Steve Kelly. And Steve and I don't talk very often. We, it's very rare when we talk because we kind of kind of fell out. And, it, and the beginning of the end for us was when I was diagnosed with cancer. So I understand how, how, how a cancer diagnosis or a, a medical, uh, you know, a, a critical illness can, can just tear families apart. Uh, and, and man, you tear a family apart. That's everlasting. My, my brother, and like I said, my brother and I are still apart, uh, and we're both grown men, uh, at this point. So I, 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 I may I interject here just for a second. Paul Cross, by all means. You brought, you brought up a very valuable point to all of this as well. A lot of times these families with the kids are spending all of their time in hospitals, in, in, in conditions that aren't conducive to enjoying life while you can. So the Make-A-Wish does include families. Uh, oh, yeah, the whole family. Yeah, so that you get this real quality, good, positive time together rather than being, you know, in a waiting room or oh, yeah. rather than even even being at home. So this is very very important. Like you said it rips some families apart because it's very tough on everyone. Uh, but this is such a glorious thing to be a part of. It really is. It is and I and I'm I'm so proud of of the Make-A-Wish Foundation. I'm so proud of Make-A-Wish and, and what what we and they do. I say we often because I I've just I volunteered for so long. I mean, this has been a mission of my life. Uh, for for most of my adult life, I mean, once I've you know finally found out about Make a Wish and what it was, uh, th- th- you know, this is not a situation where the radio station came to me and said, "All right, Joe, we need to do some sort of charity or something. We need to get into the community. We we need to get out there and do something and the, come up with something." That it was quite the opposite. In fact, as I went to the station management year after year after year and said. I really want to do a fundraiser for Make-A-Wish. Can I do it? And year after year after year, when I moved here in 2011, the station management said, no, we're we're not going to do that. We're not going to do it. We're not going to do it. Like for the first three or four years, I stopped asking, actually. And then we had a management change. And I thought, oh, this might be a good time to ask. So I asked. And the answer was yes. And then I thought, oh, my gosh, that's why the first year we did it, we literally put it together in less than a month. Because when they said yes, I'm like, then we're doing it right now. Um, so this is really important to me. Uh, because it's important to me, it is now very important to the radio station, which just tickles me pink. And, of course, we'll have more details about it. You can tap the Make-A-Wish button uh, inside the WDBO app. Now, now the three big things you need to know. Three. Three. Travelers will soon have to pay more money to park at MCO starting in October. Economy lots will go up by $4 and garages will increase by $5. A public hearing will take place before the final budget is approved. Two. Florida leaders are trying to crack down on THC products that are harming children. There were nearly 1,000 non-fatal child-related overdoses last year. Officials are hoping a new law preventing certain packaging will prevent future incidents. One. At least one. 111 one. people are confirmed dead in Hawaii from what has been the deadliest wildfire in modern U.S. history. Hawaii Governor Josh Green confirmed the new total in a news conference, adding that roughly 2,000 people are still without power. This is WDBO 1073 FM and AM 580, Orlando's news and talk. Glad you're joining us here on the Joe Kelly Show. That is uh, me. I'm Joe Kelly. 
Uh, and uh, this is the part of the show where we share with you the stories that you missed while you were at work today, while you were down in the coal mine, going down, down, while you're out in the cubicle farms, if you're out in the in the uh, strawberry fields or, or maybe uh, the cattle ranches or whatever it is you do for a living. And, and while you're at work today, here are the stories in the last eight to nine hours that you missed. Nine hours ago, ABC had the news. Former President Trump's promised press conference to refute the allegations in the indictment handed up by the Fulton County DA's office is now very much in doubt. Uh, That, according to multiple sources familiar with the matter, telling ABC News. Um, I haven't heard it yet from Donald Trump, and until I hear it from Donald Trump, I don't know that I would believe it. Uh, But Donald Trump said uh, that he was going to have an 11 a.m. news conference on Monday morning, this coming Monday morning, the Monday after this weekend, uh, to to rebut and refute the charges against him. Of course, that seems like the kind of thing that you would want to present in a court of law in your defense, not in a in a news conference. So uh, I I feel like if I was advising Donald Trump, I would tell him, you know, you might not do that. You might want to just not do that. Uh, CNN had the story eight hours ago. Hillary is in the news, not Clinton. You'll probably be glad to know, but this Hillary is not much better. As uh, Hillary is a storm strengthening into a hurricane in the Pacific, could bring heavy rain to Southern California and the Southwest this weekend. Now, Southern California uh, could use some rain. They could always use rain. They're in a perpetual drought there. But uh, this could be really catastrophic for California if it comes in buckets and buckets of rain there in Southern California. They're just not prepared for it. They're not equipped for it. If you live on a mountainside in California, uh, rain is not your friend, especially when it comes down in, in significant quantities, mass quantities of, uh, of rain. Uh, let's see, Newsmax had the story seven hours ago. James Comer, Congressman Comer, uh, the chair of the House Oversight Committee, calls on the National Archives to release unredacted copies of records from when Joe Biden was vice president, specifically requesting special access to emails related to Hunter Biden, Burisma and Ukraine. Six hours ago, Fox News reported this one. You heard this in my big three top international chess federation bans transgender females from competing in women's events. That's kind of curious, isn't it? That's not a sporting event. Why would it make a difference if transgender women compete in women's chess events? Would they, they would not have a strategic advantage, right? Am I misunderstanding how chess works? Uh, and CNN reported this five hours ago. U.S. mortgage rates soared to 7.09%, the highest level in 21 years. And lastly, uh, some 44 minutes ago, New York Times had the report that officials in Georgia are now investigating online threats against the grand jurors who voted this week to indict Donald Trump. There you have it. The stories that you missed while you were at work today. You're listening to The Joe Kelly Show on WDBO. This is WDBO 1073 FM and AM 580, Orlando's news and talk. Talk and discussion on the latest breaking national news. Crude oil prices continue to fall. Local news. You're not going to have Disney have its own government in Central Florida. And stories that matter to you. Use the open mic in the WDBO app and let your voice be heard on The Joe Kelly Show. Man, something really embarrassing for Ron DeSantis happened today. And I I feel for for Governor DeSantis because it kind of sucks. But uh, somebody on his campaign, it would seem, leaked a trove of documents outlining intelligence and strategies for DeSantis. Uh, It was all posted online dealing with the upcoming debate. And the the advice in the debate was uh, included things like uh, take a sledgehammer to Vivek Ramaswamy, attack Joe Biden and the media three to five times and defend Donald Trump from Chris Christie. So he's trying to get it both ways, you know, that he that he that he's you know pro Trump, uh, but still attacks uh, Vivek Ramaswamy and attacks Joe Biden. Uh, I, if if DeSantis does all that now, it is it is going to be even more embarrassing for him uh, because, you know, we'll have read the playbook before the game even started. Uh, I'll have some of the, the details of that trove of documents that were released uh, online today, but it's just got to be. Uh, it, it's got to just just be a dagger in the heart for 
uh, DeSantis, Team DeSantis, that all of this information made its way online, which which seemingly indicates someone on his campaign staff is not loyal. Someone on his campaign staff leaked it. Now, there have been situations in the past where uh, people doing debate prep and that kind of stuff have accidentally left the playbooks out and and they've been accidentally snatched up. And I suppose that is possible. Uh, and that better be what the DeSantis team is hoping for. I think they better hope for incompetence uh, over uh, uh, over betrayal. Uh, of the two, I think incompetence is a is a better strategy than betrayal. That that somebody on their campaign staff, their campaign team, uh, has has double crossed them and released this information online. All right, Joe. Let's talk about Joe Biden today. Joe Biden just uh, we we saw angry. Joe Biden today. Name me a single objective we've ever set out to accomplish that we failed on. Name me one in all of our history. Not one. You know, and, and when he gets angry, I, I feel like that is that is indicative of his uh, cognitive decline. That is a sign of his dementia. That is a sign of his uh, inability to think straight. Um, and I, I only say this because I, I watched as a man uh, was perfectly healthy and very bright and witty and intelligent and charming and kind and sweet. Uh, and this is my, my former father-in-law, uh, so my ex's dad. Uh, he was just the sweetest, kindest, nicest man, but he suddenly started forgetting, and he had got into a cognitive decline at a very young age. I mean, he was in his 50s, or, or I, I guess it was maybe early 60s when some of the symptoms started showing up, and it was terrible. But he, he, would, get, he would get angry. I mean, these flashes of anger, and it just reminds me so much of, of Jerry, my, my former father-in-law, because he would get angry, and, and the anger stems from not remembering things. The anger stems from, oh, my gosh, someone's going to figure this out, that, that I, I am in mental decline. And I think it's one of the reasons why we see Joe Biden, you know, on Sunday say no comment when asked about the Maui fire victims because he doesn't know what to say. He's just lost. I, I, I've said it before, and I will say it again. I feel sorry for Joe Biden. My, my predominant, my biggest feeling that I have for Joe Biden is sorrow. I, I, I feel pity for him because I, I feel like he is a marionette. He's a puppet. He is being used by someone pulling the strings, uh, be that his chief of staff or Barack Obama or uh, Valerie Jarrett or whoever it may be that is pulling the strings. Someone is pulling the strings on Joe Biden. And he has these flashes of anger. And at first, I, I thought he was talking about name one failure from my administration. But it seems like he's saying name one failure in the history of America. Name me a single objective we've ever set out to accomplish that we failed on. Name me one in all of our history. In all of our history. Not one. So I don't know if he's talking about all of our history is in American history or all of our history is in the Biden administration's history. Anyhow, uh, I thought I would pitch that to you. Name name one, just just one. I know you could probably go two or three, but name one failure from the Biden administration. Here, I'll go first. The Afghanistan withdrawal can in no uncertain terms only be described as an abysmal failure of our administration, of this administration and of this country. All those Marines that got killed didn't have to die. They didn't have to be the last ones to die in that war. But because of Joe Biden, they were the last ones to die in that war. And that is terrible. And he has never accepted responsibility for that. And it is, it is pathetic and shameful. Uh, so my question for you, name a failure, name a failure of uh, of throughout throughout the total history of the Biden administration thus far. 844-580-WDBO. It's 844-580-9326. You can use the open mic in the WDBO app and let us know uh, of any other failures that you you see from the Biden administration. So let me throw something else uh, into the mix here. There is a... <laughs> There is a woman on TikTok. Her name is Mia. And Mia 
lives in Texas, but she is Australian. She's, she's an Aussie that lives in Texas. And she has now deleted her TikTok account because of a video that she made and posted uh, from her home in somewhere in Texas. I don't know where exactly Texas, uh, where in, uh, exactly in Texas she is. I'm looking to see if it, it gives me an idea. It's a, I don't know if you know this, but Texas is a pretty big state. Yeah, I'm not seeing where in Texas. So she's living in some community in Texas, and she has grown weary of seeing so many American flags. And so she decided to go on to TikTok and to talk about how she is triggered by so many American flags. I'm just going to say it. There are too many American flags. Like, they're on houses. They're on cars. Saw them on couch cushions. Like, I don't know who's making these American flags, but they'd be making a bloody fortune. I'm like, you're the only country that I know that does this. Like, the only time I think I've ever seen an Australian flag is, like, on the Harbour Bridge. Could not tell you what it looks like. Like, I know it's, like, blue and it's got some stars on it. But I I think I could draw the American flag from memory. Like, I think I could make a bloody sculpture out of it. That's how many times I've seen it. It's enough. Let's pull back on it, okay? Let's stay humble. Stay humble. Well, I know what message we'd all like to give to this Australian young woman. Uh, Probably the same message that the governor of Texas sent to her, uh, Governor Greg Abbott, uh, in a tweet or an X. I don't know what we call this thing anymore. Uh, It simply reads from, from Governor Abbott. It simply reads, go back to Australia. You know what actually is is surprising to me a little bit about that is I have said something similar uh, in that if you've ever lived in Texas or ever been to Texas, Texans are very, very proud of their state. Okay, I grew up in Texas. I grew up in Southeast Texas. I've lived all over Texas. And Texans are very proud and Texans love the Texas flag. I remember the what I think was the first or second season of Survivor. That was the last season I watched, was like the first or second season of Survivor. I think they're on like season 321 now. But in the first season, maybe the second season, there was a guy, a contestant from Texas. And and the contestants are allowed to bring one item with them, one personal item with them. And this dude brought the Texas flag. And it, and it ended up uh, coming in handy because uh, they, they used it for shelter. I mean, they used it for a variety of things, but mostly they used it for pride. I, I could, as she said, as the Australian said, she says, I could probably draw you the American flag. I could easily draw you the Texas flag. It's a simple flag to draw. It's very simple. Um, but honestly, how often do you see the Florida flag? Almost never. So I get where she's coming from as far as flags go, because I, I, I couldn't draw you the Florida flag if I had to. The California flag has a bear on it. I know that. Uh, the New Mexico flag has a star in the middle. I know that, and it's yellowish. But, I mean, when it, when it comes to state flags, I think the most identifiable one for, for most of us is going to be the Texas flag. Uh, or, and it's not a state, but Puerto Rican, the Puerto Rican flag. And, by the way, the Puerto Rican flag and the Texas flag uh, have quite a few similarities. Uh, if you if you were to juxtapose them side by side, uh, you would think, OK, yeah, I could see where these these flags kind of resemble each other just a little bit. But so what is your message for the uh, the Australian woman who is uh, sick of seeing American flags on display uh, short of go back to go back to Australia? I I think it's kind of cool. I think it's kind of cool that an Australian woman is in Texas and she can tell you what the American flag looks like, but she can't tell you what the Australian flag looks like. Well, you know what? I'm sorry. Shame on Australia. See, America is exceptional. Uh, Australia is not exceptional. Australia is a, is a British penal colony. America was designed to be exceptional. I mean, how many nations have modeled their form of government, modeled their constitution on America's. Yeah, oh, yes, we have our problems. Oh, America lately has been, um, ha, ha, I'm trying to use a word that I can use uh, on the radio. It has been a, 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 a cluster bomb. 
Uh, America has, has, has its share of problems. We always have. We have our original sin, and then we have all the other sins we have committed in, since then. But we are the shining city on the hill. We are this, the, the country that welcomes everybody. We are the country. Uh, yes, I know our immigration system is a mess. And we should stop welcoming them as, 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 uh, with, with the mass quantities that we are. But America is exceptional. And Americans should be proud of this country that we have built. And if an Australian woman is offended by that, I'm okay with it. She can be offended. I think we should fly more flags. Now, obviously, some people are being jerks to her. I, I, there's no reason to be a jerk to her. Um, but, but she has been driven off of TikTok by all the trolls who have been making her life miserable since posting that. And, and again, that's you know part of the ugly America. We don't need to, we don't need to be trolls about it. We can just smile and say, yeah, you know what? America's great. We love America. We love our flag. 844-580-WDBO or hit me up in the open mic in the WDBO app. The Joe Kelly Show on WDBO. Now, now the three big things you need to know. Three. The state of Florida is taking over all child welfare investigations. The transition started after a new law was passed earlier this year. The department believes the change will provide better outcomes for families. Two. Gas Two. prices are continuing to rise across Florida. AAA says the state average is currently $3.84 per gallon. That's five cents higher than yesterday and 43 cents higher than this time last month. One. At One. least 111 One. people are confirmed dead in Hawaii from what has become the deadliest wildfire in modern U.S. history. Hawaii Governor Josh Green confirmed the new total in a news conference, adding that roughly 2,000 people are still without power. The Joe Kelly Show on WDBO. In-depth segments on topics that matter to Orange, Seminole, Osceola, and all of Central Florida. The Joe Kelly Show on WDBO. I love your show every night. You're doing great, bud. Hey, Joe, you kidding me? His first day in office, he shut down the Keystone Pipeline extension and all the fracking in America and all the oil drilling in America. What do you mean failures of what Biden administration did? Give me a break. Yeah. So so Biden today just goes nuts. He starts yelling again. He, so it was angry Joe Biden that we heard from today. And uh, angry Joe Biden was uh, definitely, uh, well, he was definitely angry. Uh, as we, we hear here, once again, from Joe Biden. Name me a single objective we've ever set out to accomplish that we failed on. Name me one in all of our history. Not one. Grr. All right. So let's see if you guys... Uh, can name one. One failure of yeah, just, the Biden administration? Yeah, just one. Uh, let's see. All right. Afghanistan. Got it. Yep, that's it. That's one. The economy. Oh, there's two. Gas prices. Uh, there's three. Okay. Inflation. Uh, f- yeah, four. The Middle East. Five. How many more do we need? <laughs> no, I, just one was all I said. Here's an easy one. How about our economy and inflation? You absolute moron of a president. Yeah, we've got a few few of uh, inflation and economy issues now, don't we? Joe, just a couple. Uh, let's think. The border. The fentanyl crisis. Oh, that's a good one, yeah. This economy. Yep, definitely. The energy crisis. Yes. High gas prices. Yep. Do I have to go on? You don't have to. This guy's an utter failure. Yeah, no, no, no. One was enough. Oh, my goodness. The can of worms that Joe Kelly just opened up on live radio. Uh Uh-oh. Other than Afghanistan, uh, well, let's go in alphabetical order. Afghanistan was... Then I guess let's go border. Yep, and that's so uh, we got A and B. So what would what would what would C be? COVID. Oh, you know, honestly, C to me, this is a big one to me. He said he was going to cure cancer. In fact, he actually said that he did cure cancer, which is balderdash of the highest order. Uh, but yeah, if we're going to go A B C, uh, Afghanistan. Uh, and I've already forgot what the B was, <laughs> and then and then the uh, the the moonshot for cancer. Yeah, no, that oh the border. That's right. 
Um, all right, 844-580-WDBO or use the open mic in the WDBO app. Now, WDBO 107.3 FM and AM 580. Triple team traffic. WDBO Orlando. WOEX FM HD2 Orlando. W297BB Orlando. Powered by Talon Wealth Management. Visit guardingyournesteg.com. Listen everywhere at WDBO.com, a Cox Media Group station. This is WDBO 1073 FM and AM 580. Orlando's news and talk. News, weather, traffic, all the things you want on your drive home. Plus, Joe Kelly being, well, Joe Kelly. Now, the Joe Kelly Show on Orlando's News and Talk, WDBO. If you're just joining us here on the Joe Kelly Show, we got a few uh, a few different balls in the air right now that we are juggling uh, here in the uh, the talk radio universe. Well, the first of which is angry Joe Biden today. Name me a single objective we've ever set out to accomplish that we failed on. Name me one in all of our history. Not one. Angry Joe Biden. And then we have uh, what uh, uh, what can only be described as uh, is not a big fan of American flags. An Australian woman who lives in Texas who went on TikTok, made this video, uh, and then has now deleted her entire account because uh, she has uh, evidently been harassed so much for making this video. I'm just going to say it. There are too many American flags. Like they're on houses, they're on cars, saw them on couch cushions. Like, I don't know who's making these American flags, but they'd be making a bloody fortune. I'm like, you're the only country that I... I'm sorry, I feel like I have to stop right there. When she says, I don't know who's making these American flags. Sadly, it's probably China that's making those American flags. I'm just going to say it. There are too many American flags. What? Like, they're on houses, they're on cars, saw them on couch cushions. Like, I don't know who's making these American flags, but they'd be making a bloody fortune. Yeah. I'm like, you're the only country that I know that does this. Like, the only time I think I've ever seen an Australian flag is, like, on the Harbour Bridge. Could not tell you what it looks like. Like, I know it's, like, blue and it's got some stars on it. But I I think I could draw the American flag from memory. Like, I think I could make a bloody sculpture out of it. That's how many times I've seen it. It's enough. Let's pull back on it, okay? Let's stay humble. Yeah, you know, our, our flag... It's a grand old flag. It's, it's a high flying flag. <laughs> oh no! It's okay. It's the only, it's the only, those are the only lyrics I know. It stops. Yeah, you're right. You duck out after that. It stops. Uh, your first there. line of lyrics, and then you're done. That's right? it. I tell you, I know the first yeah. five words of every five to eight words of every song ever made. I know the first five to eight words, and then I know nothing after that. And the rest is and then uh, of course we're talking about Make a Wish as we're getting ready for our a Wishathon coming up a week from Friday. Hi, Joe. My name is Jeff Thompson. My son, Noah Thompson, was granted his wish, and uh, he was battling leukemia. And his diagnosis of leukemia came almost one year to the day after my hemorrhagic stroke wow. that put me in a coma for five days. So I cannot express to you how amazing that was for our family to have a week away on the beach. Mm, that makes me so happy. I am so glad to hear that. Thank you for sharing that story with me. Thank you very much. We're going to share a lot of stories like that uh, coming up a week from Friday. Uh, it'll, it'll be all day long, a 10-hour radiothon for Make-A-Wish. People can disagree with me, but I agree with you, Joe. There's two things I donate to, Make-A-Wish Foundation and Shan's Hospital, the Bears, every year, buddy. Yep. That's it. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that, man. I really appreciate it. You can go to WDBOWish.com. We've sped up, set up a special website. Go to WDBOWish.com. You can also tap the Make-A-Wish button in the WDBO app. Uh, and then by, on Friday, next week, next Friday, a, day, a week after tomorrow, we'll be out live at, uh, at uh, Urban Air in Altamont Springs, right, at, right there by Cranes Roost Park. And you can just literally drive by or you can come park and hang out with us. Uh, Laurel's going to be out there for the day. Uh, my wife tells me that she'll probably come out as well. So uh, it should be a whole lot of fun. So uh, j- plan on joining us next Friday, week from tomorrow, out, out there by Cranes Roost Park at Urban Air. Listen up. Let's check her citizenship and deport her immediately. She needs to go back to Australia. Yeah, there's. we're getting a lot of that for Here's sure. Here's an easy one. How about our economy and inflation? 
you absolute moron of a president. Yeah, we're talking about uh, Biden's failures because Biden challenged us to name one failure. Joe, just a couple. Uh, let's think. The border. The fentanyl crisis. Yeah, that's a good one. This economy. Yeah. The energy crisis. Yeah. High gas prices. Do I have to go on? Yeah, this no. guy's an utter failure. Yeah, no, I think you, I definitely think you got it. There's also another TikTok on TikTok of a woman standing with her daughter, it looks like, and she points to the American flag and says, if you have that flag, you're a racist. Have you seen that one, Joe? Man, no, I haven't. Honestly, I don't spend very much time on TikTok. I did for a while. Uh, I am I am a creator on TikTok, so I, I actually have been paid uh, for content that I create for TikTok. Um, not a lot, uh, just about uh, seven or eight million dollars, and that's about it. And <laughs> no, I'm kidding. What? I think it was like seven or eight dollars. I mean, it really was has not been not been very much. Now I'm told we have an Aussie. We have an Aussie who wants to comment about the Aussie. So I'm an Australian, but I'm also an American. I'm a citizen of America, and I'm very proud of the American flag. And I think she should go back to Australia, too. She can't even remember how to draw the Australian flag. She has no pride in her own home nation and no pride in where she lives today. That's a real pity. That is, right? I mean, what an empty life. What an empty life. If it, you just you, you you don't have any pride in the country that you're living in. You don't have any pride in the country that you came from. And it's sad. It's sad because, cause Paul, really, it is a grand old flag. It's a, it's a <laughs> high-flying flying flag, flag, Joe. It's a flag that flags and the flag. <laughs> Damn it. Why, why, where are the lyrics? Can someone please give me the lyrics to that song? It's a grand old flag. It's a high-flying flag. All right, we'll get to that later. Uh, this I thought was really interesting today. The chess governing body, or one of the chess governing bodies, uh, the uh, FIDE, which stands for, uh, there's not even a C in that acronym. How, how could that be the chess governing body? There's not a C in the acronym. I don't know what it stands for, but they... Uh, the, the chess governing body, the world's top chess federation, uh, has ruled that transgender women cannot compete in official events, uh, events for females until they have an assessment of gender change of gender change is made by the officials there. You know, all the all the arguments we've had about women in, in oh. sports and, and transgender women in sports, transgender women, for the record, are people who are born men but identify as women. And for all of the discussions we've had about swimmers, you know, with Riley Gaines and for the discussions that we have had uh, about uh, track and field, for the discussions we've had about um, uh, bicycle racing, for for all uh, weightlifting, you know, of these trans women, again, born men uh, competing and now chess. I'm sorry. What did I, the physical aspect, right. I can understand. It but makes, are they saying, it I'm makes sorry, sense men in, are smarter than women, so you can't do this, or me, women are smarter than men? I so mean, it makes can, sense in, in swimming and track and field and bicycling and all these other things, but I don't know that it makes any sense in chess. I mean, I do, do I not? I, I play chess. I don't play it well. I, I play sometimes on the chess app, and then we have got a couple chess boards at the house, and Ronnie and I will play chess sometimes. Uh, and I'm I'm... I'm marginal at best i'm sub marginal at best but i don't i don't see where a trans woman would have an advantage over <laughs> over a regular woman am i do i not understand how chess works paul no you you are i I'm agreeing with you. I think it's the absolute most asinine thing i've ever heard but you so know. so i i know that i know that you comma our listeners comma are accustomed to saying, yeah, women, uh, trans men, trans women shouldn't be doing that. But can we not all agree that chess might be an exception? I mean, I that's get... Like saying, that's like saying I can't play Monopoly with anybody but other men because then it's unfair. Yeah. It makes no sense. No, I, I, I'm lost on that one. Uh, so let me know if there's something about chess that I simply don't understand and, uh, and we'll deal with it. Uh, speaking about TikTok, another TikToker, she goes, uh, she goes to Beverly Hills. She's, uh, her name is Jessica Palmadessa, and uh, she is a popular TikTok creator. And she is asking teenagers in Beverly Hills, 
how much they think the average uh, average American makes in a year. Now, in the beginning of the video, uh, on the screen, it says, it reads, $54,000 is what the average American makes. Uh, but the Bureau of Labor Statistics says that the average mean wage is 61900 So, but, but she asks uh, a bunch of teenagers in Beverly Hills what they think the average American makes or earns. How much do you think the average American makes a year? Maybe like 400K, 450. How much do you think the average American makes a year? Mm, I don't know, maybe like half a million. How much do you think that the average American makes a year? 90 to 100K. How much do you think the average American makes a year? 200,000, 250,000. Boy, are they out of touch. Boy, are they out of touch. And I don't know if they're out of touch because they're teenagers or out of touch because they're teenagers in Beverly Hills. Uh, I would like to think that my teenagers, you know, I've got uh, I've got twin sons, as you know, uh, big boy and little man. And I feel like if you were to ask big boy and little man right now how much the average American makes, they would probably throw out a figure of 50 to maybe sixty thousand dollars a year. I need to get either fat boy or little man on the phone right now and and find out what they think. Um, but and, and, nineteen dollars and thirty four cents an hour. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and and if you couldn't quite make out what they were saying, so the first Gen Zer says somewhere between four hundred thousand and four hundred and fifty thousand. Uh, the the dude says I don't know maybe half a million, half a million dollars. Another person guessed between two hundred and two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year. The closest guess was the person who said between ninety and a hundred thousand dollars a year. I mean, they're way off on on what actually the average American actually makes. And honestly, if you're making you know fifty five to sixty thousand dollars a year, I promise you that you're struggling to get by. You are struggling to get by in in Joe Biden's America and Joe Biden's economy and Bidenomics. Uh, You are struggling to get by. We read the statistic. We had that earlier this week uh, that with the inflation we're under right now, uh, that this has added to uh, every American household on average seven hundred dollars. I pause. This is my dramatic pause is added seven hundred dollars. A month to the average American household budget. Added $700 in debt, not $700 in income. It's $700 that you owe more a month under Joe Biden's economy than before it was Joe Biden's economy. I don't know how he can. And, and by the way, that speech today was that he was yelling. Uh, that, that, was a, that was a speech on Bidenomics that he was delivering when he starts yelling about uh, name one failure from America. Wow, I'd have to say that the uh, $709 extra we're paying per month, that, that's a massive, massive failure. If you want to just name one. I mean, I, I still think that the withdrawal from Afghanistan is killing the Keystone Pipeline on day one of your presidency. I mean, come on. Don't, don't, don't lob us a, a, an easy one like that, Mr. Biden, Mr. President. I'm Joe Kelly. You can join me at 844-580-WDBO or hit me up in the open mic in the WDBO app. The Joe Kelly Show on WDBO. The Joe Kelly Show on WDBO. Connected to our community. Talk local issues and events with Joe Kelly. Use the open mic in the WDBO app and let Joe know what interests you. The Joe Kelly Show on WDBO. I had to go get the American flag. I have an American flag in my office. So I didn't have to go very far to find an American flag. Uh, I've got one in my office. The the, the particular one I have is actually a a Donald Trump bobblehead doll. And he's hugging hugging the flag. Uh, If you're watching the live video stream on the chat room right now, you can see that. Uh, So there's that. And uh, you've got a proud-to-be-American pencil, Paul Cross. That's very nice. Very, very good. Uh, And... (laughs) So we're talking about this uh, this Australian woman. If you if you miss this, an Australian woman living in the United States is off put, triggered, if you will, by the abundance. She lives in Texas by the abundance of American flags. I'm just going to say it: there are too many American flags. Like they're on houses, they're on cars, some of them on couch cushions. 
like, I don't know who's making these American flags, but they'd be making a bloody fortune. I'm like, you're the only country that I know that does this. Like, the only time I think I've ever seen an Australian flag is like on the Harbour Bridge. Could not tell you what it looks like. Like, I know it's like blue and it's got some stars on it. But I, I think I could draw the American flag from memory. Like, I think I could make a bloody sculpture out of it. That's how many times I've seen it. It's enough. Let's pull back on it, okay? Let's stay humble. So, Paul Cross, would you be surprised if I told you that a number of people uh, on the open mic are singing a uh, grand old flag? <laughs> so so I tried, to, I tried to sing it, but I couldn't get past the first couple of words because I only know the first five to eight words of every song ever done. But... I truly know the first five to eight words of every song ever done. If, <laughs> if we ever go on a road trip together, you're going to be blown away at how many songs I know. But I don't know past the first few words. So hang on. we got a few open mics here. You're a grand old flag. You're a high-flying flag. And forever in peace may you wave. Oh, yeah. You're the emblem of the land I love. The home of the free and the brave. Nice. Every heart beats true for the red, white. And blue, blah blah blah. That's all I can remember. <laughs> well, you got further than I did for sure on that one. Hang on, let's check, check one more. You're a grand old flag, you're a high flying flag, and forever in peace may you wave. You're the emblem of the land I love, the home of the free and the brave. Every heart beats true for the red, white, and blue, where there's never a boast or brag. But should old acquaintance be forgot, keep your eye on that grand old flag. Oh, man, we've got some really talented listeners, don't we? This is awesome. Very, very talented listeners. And then we're talking about the... Uh, the, some chess federation, the uh, governing body, uh, has now banned transgender women. Transgender women; those are men. Transgender women from from women's uh, events. Joe, are you sure it's chess, or are they talking about chest? Oh yeah, I don't. Uh, hmm, that's interesting. I should uh, look that up. Hey Joe, you're giving in to the uh, terminology of the left when you call uh, define what a transgender woman is, saying that it's somebody who started out as a man. Actually, to me, that's a transgender man. It's a man who thinks that he's transferred his gender, but he's still a man. Well, he, and he is. He is a man. And but but I I just find it confusing. And I I if I'm confused by something, I I will sometimes assume that our listeners could similarly be confused. And if you hear the term trans woman. I don't always, I mean, I, I, I know now what a trans woman is, but in the beginning of this whole debate, I hadn't the slightest idea. I had to, I had to figure it out. It's like, well, what is a trans, what is a trans woman? What is a trans man? What is the difference? Uh, and, and that's why I define it. So our listeners aren't confused uh, when they hear the term trans woman. That means that's a person who was born a man and now identifies as a woman. Hey, Joe, the Australian lady, it's probably an indication that they're failing in their schools in Australia as well, or she'd realize that the American flag and the U.S. military basically were the only thing standing between them becoming a colony of Japan in about 1942 and them remaining free as they are today the U.S. flag, the U.S. Navy and Marine Corps and Army. Absolutely so. What a great, great point. We've got such, again, smart listeners. You guys really get it. I appreciate that. 844-580-WDBO. Use the open mic in the WDBO app. This is WDBO, 107.3 FM and AM 580, Orlando's news and talk. Insightful. You tell the truth from your point of view. Entertaining. Man, that guy is a lot taller than he sounds on the radio. And engaging. When we hear you on the radio, it's a good thing. The Joe Kelly Show on WDBO. All right, seriously, no more singers. No, no more singers on the open mic. But I do have to play. I have to play one more. I got to play one more. It's a woman, and she's got a lovely voice, and she uh, she sings the conclusion. Uh, to that first line of uh, Grand Old Flag. And this is Terry with the rest of the song. Terry. Should old acquaintance be forgot, keep your eye on the Grand Old Flag. There you have it. Doesn't she have a beautiful voice? I, I, I love 
loved her her voice. I thought that was awesome. Uh, we're talking about this Australian woman uh, who is sick of seeing so many American flags. Hey, lady from, uh, you know, down under, you're in the wrong state to be complaining about uh, the American flag being flown everywhere and shown everywhere. Those millions of dollars that somebody is making, those are millions of dollars that are Americans are proud to spend to show their loyalty to this country. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I'm with you. We have the most beautiful flag in the world, and our symbol is an eagle, not a damn kangaroo. So, so, here, so here's something funny, okay? You want to hear something funny? So I, I thought that was a cheap shot at Australia to say oh, the symbol's the damn kangaroo. So I thought I would look up to see what... Uh, Australia's national bird is because our the eagle is our national bird. Uh, the the kangaroo is probably their national marsupial or whatever a kangaroo is. So get this, y'all are gonna love this. Hey Google, what is Australia's national bird? Emus. On the website byjews.com, <laughs> they say emu is Australia's national bird. Emus, 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 or emus, emos, emus. So emus are their national bird. They can't even fly. I mean, I know that turkeys that we eat for, for Thanksgiving can't fly just because we breed them so that they can't fly, so that they have enough uh, chest, chest, breast meat or whatever it is. Um, but, but wild eagles can fly not long. I don't think they migrate, right? They just walk. <laughs> yeah, they, they hitchhike, I guess. I but, don't know. but emu, I just thought that was so funny that, uh, that their national bird is an emu. Isn't a kiwi a bird? But they also call kiwis, well, New Zealanders are called kiwis, right? Yes, Aren't New Zealanders? That is correct. And is mm-hmm. is is a kiwi a bird that still lives, or has it gone extinct? Or am I thinking of the dodo? I, it still it still lives. You might be thinking of the dodo. That's yeah. Um, by the way, evidently, every time I I say "Hey Google," it activates everybody else's Google uh, devices. So I'm really sorry about that. <laughs> I listen, Joe. Uh, my, uh, Michael in the chat just got a good one. He just said, "No, they do not hitchhike, Paul. They sell door to door car insurance." <laughs> oh, the emus. <laughs> That's funny. Who snorted? Okay. Who snorted? <laughs> if I find out who snorted on the Joe Kelly show, I'm going to be very upset. <laughs> Hang on. Another uh, pressing question here. Hi, Joe Kelly. Hi. Love your show. We Thank- listen to you every day. Thank you. On the way home from work. Thank you. But we got to ask a question. Uh-oh. Got to know why you're saying the word comma in your sentences. <laughs> I just have to know why. Just so curious. Love you. Keep doing what you do. Bye. Thank you. So you know that promo we have that says, and sometimes when Joe Kelly is just being Joe Kelly, that's me being Joe Kelly, honestly. And and, and the the genesis of that, the origin story between uh, of me saying comma uh, out loud when it's not necessary is is voice to text dictation. Uh, you know, because I've been doing voice to text dictation so long. This is the funniest story. So <laughs> when my kids were quite a bit younger, when when the twins were quite a bit younger, uh, Snoopy and Woodstock, my twin sons, when they were younger uh, and I would be dictating something on my phone to somebody, they didn't understand why I would say the punctuation out loud. And so invariably my my kids would come to me and they'd be like, Hey, Dad, can we go have ice cream, question mark? And I would, I would laugh. I was like, A, yeah, we can go get ice cream. And B, technically, you're not supposed to say the question mark out loud. So, I mean, not just technically. You're not supposed to say the question mark out loud, but invariably that's what I would do is say the question mark out <laughs> that's, loud. That's clever, though, because sometimes my text writes out the word comma or the word Period. Really? So I've just kind of, uh, yeah, and I've just kind of given up now. Because I, that stuff. Uh, what I've found is I use ellipsis a lot, a lot when I send text messages. And for those that don't know, an ellipsis is the dot, dot, dot. And you can say either ellipsis or dot, 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 and it works both ways uh, mm-hmm. when you're doing voice to text. So this is, this is just super, super embarrassing for Ron DeSantis. And Ron DeSantis has had a lot of embarrassing news stories lately. I mean, his campaign, I mean, he was supposed to be the golden child. He was supposed to be the Trump killer. Uh, And it is just every single day 
for Ron DeSantis has been worse than the day before since he launched his presidential campaign. It started badly with his uh, his launch on Twitter spaces or whatever that is. Uh, I don't even know if that still exists. Twitter doesn't even exist anymore. I mean, it's X now. But I, I think the latest news about Ron DeSantis is the most embarrassing news to date about Ron DeSantis. And that is the New York Times has published a memo um, that basically is it's a it's a treasure trove of documents that have been obtained by the New York Times that has it's hundreds of pages of blunt advice, research memos, internal polling uh, in early nominating states uh, to to guide the governor ahead of the debate coming up next Wednesday in Milwaukee. Or is it this Wednesday in Milwaukee? Either way, the memos say there are four basic must-dos. One of the memos urges Ron DeSantis, um, whom the document refers to as GRD. You know what that stands for, right? GRD. That's Governor Ron DeSantis. DeSantis. Yeah, there you go. Um, So number one, attack Joe Biden and the media three to five times. Oh, dude, that is so embarrassing. That is so embarrassing that it's not just attack, uh, attack Biden and the media, but to say to do it three to five times. That's number one, the bullet point number one. Bullet point number two, state GRD's positive vision Two to three times. Ugh. Three. Hammer Vivek Ramaswamy in a response. Four. Defend Donald Trump in a in absentia in response to a Chris Christie attack. So stand up for Donald Trump when Chris Christie attacks him. So that way, so we so we know then that the DeSantis is trying to have it both ways, right? He wants to look like an ally to Donald Trump on the debate stage when Trump's not there. I'm sure the strategy would be very different uh, if Trump was there because Trump would be there to defend himself rather than having to rely on Ron DeSantis to defend him. Uh, But just embarrassing for the DeSantis campaign. Uh, I I, I feel bad for him. And and either, and I don't know which is worse, honestly, either he has a, a disloyal member of his team that leaked that to the New York Times or somebody is incompetent And they left it exposed. They either left the file, literally printed paper out somewhere, or they got sloppy in emails and copied the New York Times or something along those lines. 844-580-WDBO or use the open mic in the WDBO app. The Joe Kelly Show on WDBO. The Joe Kelly Show on WDBO. Breaking news to lively debates, covering the issues that matter to you. I make it a point to listen to Joe Kelly when I need to fully understand what's happening in the news. Now, the Joe Kelly Show on Orlando's News and Talk, WDBO. I got to tell you, I'm watching a show that you guys need to watch. It's on Netflix, and it's called Painkiller. And it is the, it's the real life story of OxyContin and how OxyContin uh, was spread around the United States uh, uh, unwittingly. And, uh, you know, it is, it is one molecule different than heroin. And it's, a, it's about the Sackler family that owns uh, Purdue Pharma and that th- who they recently had to settle for billions of dollars. Uh, and if, if even part of what this show depicts is true... It is breathtaking what the Sackler family pulled on the United States that is still having repercussions to this day. Uh, they they played on unsuspecting people and and shady doctors that were willing to write massive amounts of prescriptions for OxyContin. I mean, it is it is really worth the watch. Uh, the the show is based upon. A deposition that was given by one of the investigators in the case. It, it's very compelling, and it stars Matthew Broderick, uh, which you got to love him, and he does a wonderful job in it. So check it out. It's on Netflix. It's called Painkiller. I'm Joe Kelly. Third hour of Hannity is coming up next. <laughs> 